friends. We are back now for part two of the tutorial for the Haleyville hat. And this portion of the tutorial will also give you some important information for making the Haleyville cowl, which matches it. Uh, if you're not feeling sure quite about how to uh, work the stitch pattern for the cowl, then this will be a good tutorial for you to watch as well so that you can see how to how to do that stitch pattern. At the end of the first tutorial video that I recently put out, I had just finished seaming the band for the Haleyville hat. And now I'm ready to show you how to make the body of the hat. Through this chain slip stitch. All right, so now I've seamed my ends together and it makes a complete ring. Now, this seam I just made, I'm gonna want this to be inside my hat, not outside. So at this point, I'm ready to start the body of the hat, but I'm gonna turn it right side out so that that ridge is on the inside. And I'm going to begin, that's my tail, I don't want that. I'm going to begin stitching into the row ends. That's what we call them in crochet terminology. Basically, you know, I was making rows of single crochet here the row ends, they're just the ends of the row here. Uh, crochet stitches you can really put anywhere you can stick your hook. And so if I put my hook through some of these holes along the ends of the rows, then I can start stitching, you know, around like this, all right? So I'm going to chain one. And then it's always a little tricky finding that very first row end but it's going to be here. I'm going to do three single crochet stitches in row ends. One. Now, what's important here, this hole looks nice and big. It would be easy to go into, but there's only one strand of yarn here. And if I place my hook in this hole, this hole is gonna get stretched open really badly. So instead, I'm going to stick it under this. These two little strands right here are a stitch. I'm going to actually stick it under that. So there's my second one. I'm gonna skip that big wide open hole and go here. That's the third one. Now, I'm going to do four half double crochets in the next four, or one in each of the next four row ends. So here, skip that big wide open hole here. Go in here under this stitch. And one more here. All right, so I have seven, should have seven stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is actually the chain one that I did. This right here that kind of looks like the top of a stitch. That's my chain one. This right here is my first stitch, all right? Now, at this point, I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip a row end. That's right here. I'm gonna skip that one. Instead, I'm going to go into this one. And I'm going to do seven half double crochets, one in each of the next seven row ends. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, now I'll chain one again. Skip the next row in, which is gonna be right here, and instead go into this one.
All right, that's seven, and I'm almost back to the beginning. Now, in the pattern, I said at the beginning of this first row to place a locking stitch marker in your first stitch. That would be right here. I didn't actually do that. Um, you don't just have to, but it helps make it easier for counting rows. So I'm not going to do that in this video, but if you want to make it easier to count the rows, then you'll put a marker here. Now at this point, I've just finished seven half double crochet stitches, and so it's time to chain one, skip a row end, and then do seven more half double crochets. Now the way that I've written this pattern, I didn't write it so that you would join rounds and then turn. And the reason I did that was so that there wouldn't be a visible seam in the body of the hat. Instead, I'm working in what we call a spiral where you just keep going around and around. That's why having the stitch marker there will help because there's not gonna be an obvious uh, end and beginning to your rounds after this one. So what you're going to do at this point is you're gonna half double crochet into the first stitch that you did and this is the start of your second round. If you're using a marker at this point, you'll move the locking stitch marker into the stitch that I just finished to mark the beginning of row two. And now at this point, you're going to half double crochet into every stitch and skip every chain space around the hat. But that can get a little bit complicated because of the way half double crochet stitches look. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute when I get to the chain space. All right, so that should be seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, at this point, the chain space is here, but the question is, is this the chain or is this the chain? And the reason that matters is because after I chain one, I'm ready to stitch another half double crochet stitch, and I'm not sure if I'm skipping this or if I'm skipping this. So here's the thing about a half double crochet stitch. Here's one of them right here. This is the body of the stitch. This is the top of it. It's not even above the body of the stitch over here. It's to the right of it. And so each of these stitches, as you look at them, here's the body, here's the top. Here's the body, here's the top. It's always to the right of the stitch. And that helps in this case because we know that here's the body of a stitch, the top of it is over here to the right. That must mean that this is my chain, which it is. Here's the body of a stitch and here's the top of it. So when I chain one here, I'm going to skip the chain space. That's this. Okay, and that means that I'm going to stitch into this here. Now, because half double crochet stitches are like this, their tops are to the right of their bodies, you can see that my chain space, even though they're technically on top of each other, this one is actually to the right of this one. And that's gonna to continue to happen all the way up the hat, which is why these lines of chain spaces look like they're going diagonal and they swirl to the top of the hat. It's that natural bias of half double crochet stitches that causes that even though, technically speaking, your chain spaces are stacked on top of each other. The bias of the stitch is what causes it to move diagonally. So you're going to, again, half double crochet in the next seven stitches. Here's my chain space, so at this point, I just stitched into this stitch here. I'm going to chain one, skip this chain, and stitch into here.
All right, and again, I just stitched into this stitch here. Remember that the top is to the right of the body. This right here is my chain. That is the chain. I'm going to chain one here, skip this chain, and stitch into this stitch. Now, for the next several rounds, the hat is just going to be going straight up. There's not going to be any decreasing. So all you're going to be doing is doing a half double crochet stitch into seven half double crochet stitches, chain one, skip the chain space, stitch into the next stitch. And this goes on for several rounds. If you have placed a marker in the first stitch of every round, you'll be able to see when you're finishing each round and count your rounds so that you don't lose track of when it's time to begin the decrease rounds because after we've gone a ways up the side in order to close the hat at the top we're going to have to start doing some decreases so in the decrease rounds it says do you have double crochet in the next five stitches i've done three so let's do two more four and five <clears throat> And then it says to decrease over the next two stitches. You do that like this. Yarn over, insert into the first stitch, cross over the front of your hook and pull that loop up. And then you're gonna repeat that. Yarn over into the next stitch, grab the yarn and pull it through. And now you should have five loops on your hook and you're gonna yarn over and pull through all five of those. That takes these two stitches and turns them into just one stitch. So I'll show you that again. So then it's time for me to chain one, skip the chain, stitch into here. And I, you know, if I were in my first decrease round, then I'd be making five stitches. So there's two, three, four, and five, and then the decrease goes like this again. Yarn over into the first stitch of the decrease, pull this yarn through, yarn over into the second stitch of the decrease, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all five loops. And there's another decrease. So you'll be following the instructions in the pattern in order to complete the decrease rounds, and each so you do, you know, this decrease round, and then in the next one, you'll only stitch into four stitches, one, two, three, four, and then work a decrease here. So the hat is gonna get smaller in each round once you get to the crown section of the hat until the last round is very small. And then you'll be putting your yarn on a yarn needle and going back and forth through the tops of the last round of stitches and pulling it tight in order to close the top of the hat. So that's how it's done. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope that it's been helpful to you. And please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and look in the description box for helpful links, especially a link to subscribe to my newsletter. You get two free patterns when you subscribe to my newsletter. And then you'll get to hear from me once or twice a month with uh, information about what patterns and tutorials and videos I've put out lately. See you soon.